It's that wonderful time of the year again. It's Christmas. And for today's prompt, it is Gilda Beast. And Jane Davenport in her Facebook group said that Gilda Beast was sort of like a really pretty wildebeest. I think that's how she put it. I had no idea what I wanted to do, but I was always looking forward to this prompt because I knew that sometime in the future, I was going to use my James Luke Burke creative horn stamps. Now, these stamps are, well, they're fun, but I generally don't have a lot of opportunity to use my James Luke Burke stamps. And, oh, look at that. Oh, isn't watercolour amazing? It's just, it's just, oh, it's so pretty. These are the, um, the Gansai Tambi, oh, goodness me, I can't remember the name of it. Oh, the Starry Colours, sorry. And they are the beautiful, beautiful metallics and... Oh, the way that they glide across the paper, it's just, oh, it's amazing. They just, they have this really weird granulation to them as well. Not as a, it's not something that I find to be a bad granulation though. Not, um, it's sort of similar to the Daniel Smith, the way that they move and separate and things like that. But they are really, really good shiny like really metallic and really glittery oh they're just just beautiful so I'm using watercolor paper and I I'm just dropping these colors onto the paper because I'm going to stamp on the top of it and I'm going to use a Jane Davenport face stamp and James Luke Burke creative um horn stamp or antlers or however you would like to look at them but I wanted to have a metallic or glittery base. And I found that these particular watercolours are best for that. And I'm using a Sandy Toes squid ink. And I'm just putting it down on the paper so that I can cut it out. And let me tell you, it was fiddly to get to cut, not James face stamps because they were easy to cut out but the James Luke Burke stamp which you'll see in a minute was really fiddly and it took probably about oh, I'd say 10 minutes just to cut yeah this stamp took forever to cut it out and honestly I wish I had done something a little bit less detailed but I really liked the look like I really liked how it came out so as you can see, it's currently reflecting, the um, watercolour is reflecting off my um, studio lamp and table lamp, sorry. Um, and this sort of made it a little difficult to see what I was doing at some point when I was adding the details a little bit later. Um, but right here, I'm just putting matte medium down on the paper and I am deliberately not putting the matte medium on top of my um, Jane face specifically because if I do I will lose all of that shimmer and shine and I didn't want that I wanted her to sparkle so I'm using the horns or antlers and just sticking them down and just you know wherever I would like and I'm using my acrylic stamping block to flatten the image so that I'm not actually putting matte medium on top by accident and I do this a lot and it's a really neat little trick, especially if you're using like sparkles or metallics or something like that to go over the, um, you don't want to use matte medium over the top. So if you use the acrylic block, it pushes it down to the paper and, um, yeah, it helps it stick better. And cause this is watercolor paper, it's quite thick. So it took a little bit to get it to stick properly. Um, so yeah. And now I'm going to use some glitzy marker. And I've used these almost in every single prompt, I think, so far. Yeah. Um, these are just so pretty. 
they just sparkle so beautifully as you can see um, and I was just outlining this and then unfortunately my glitzy marker sort of splodged it just just a little drop just a little splodge so I had to move it around the paper I wasn't originally going to color that little bit in um, but I it's okay it didn't bother me I just went through and colored that little bit and um, yeah I'm not sure why it splodged the way it did but oh well <laughs> these things happen occasionally um, I was going to do her hair in silver but because it's a very dark watercolor in the background the silver wasn't really um, popping in the way that I wanted it to do you know um, like you can sort of you can sort of see what's happening but yeah it just wasn't giving me that oomph that opaqueness that I wanted and um, it was also really difficult to see because of the angle that I was sitting at I just couldn't see what was happening um, so I've got my licensed to quill pen and I thought I would go over the top with the black and I really like how the black looked it sort of just gave like the whole thing a little bit of extra dimension and her hair I actually am surprised at how well her hair came out in my opinion um, I'm really not very good at hair but you know this was just I really liked this I took my time though because the um, LTQ is a brush pen and if you push down too hard you get a really thick line and I didn't want a super thick line um, so yeah I am slowly getting a little bit more practiced at using the LTQ pen the license to quill pen um, this is from Jane Davenport obviously and yeah it was yeah it was really good and then I'm using a Jane Davenport ink credible pen this one is in this this really nice sort of greeny um like a greeny tealy color not what's the not the color of the pen the ink and um it contrasts really nicely but it doesn't show up very well on camera I'm giving her a little necklace because I thought it would look really good and then I decided to add some little um, strings, fairy lights, maybe. I don't really know what they are, to be honest. I just really liked them. I've seen this being done, like, heaps of times. Like, goodness, um, hundreds of times, probably. I don't know really where I've got it from, but I'd like to say probably Jane at some point has done it and... I know James Luke Burke has done it, so I've drawn inspiration from both of them. And, yeah, just adding little dots and stars, just as little details and things like that, which is really quite nice. Adding a little bit of detail to the eyes. Um, I forgot that the ink was a water-soluble ink, so when I put the gel pen on top, it's uh, sort of activated the uh, ink underneath. Um, but that's okay, I don't mind. Um, adding a little bit of doodling uh, with the glitzy marker and a little bit of purple to her eyes, which unfortunately you can't see very well. But yeah, that was Gildebeast. Um, honestly, I think this piece was, wasn't anything fantastic, but it wasn't anything terrible. It was like just fun and interesting and different and yeah, really happy with this one. Um, I didn't put as much time into it as I couldn't. I had a really busy day, but um, I am glad that I got to sit down and play with my um, Gunsai Darby um, Starry Colors Metallic pencils, uh, Paints. So, thank you. Bye.